Hello, this is Patricia Kovacevic, General Counsel and Chief Compliance Officer with Nikapir Labs. I have the privilege to be here today with Tony Abud, the Legislative Director of the Vapor Technology Association. Nikapir Labs is a founding member and a board member of the Vapor Technology Association. Thank you, Tony, for accepting uh, this interview. Thank you, Patricia. It's fantastic that you uh, are doing this. So what is VTA? What is the Vapor Technology Association? Well, the Vapor Technology Association is a national trade association. We are an advocacy group that is comprised of small businesses, mid-sized businesses, and large businesses, manufacturers, wholesalers, retailers, distributors uh, of vapor technology products um, in the United States. Uh, we have members from around the world, uh, and our, our, our goal is to make sure that everything we do represents the full spectrum of the industry. So what motivates the VTA? What is the mission of our organization? So I think what we've seen, Patricia, is that there has been a, a series of, of, of regulations that are um, unreasonable, that are trying to control this industry in a way that is very counterproductive. So our goal as a, as a trade association is to make sure that laws and regulations are passed and or changed um, that will best protect the industry while also protecting consumers and the users of uh, vapor technology products. And generally speaking, uh, what would be VTA's primary objective at this time in the uh, life of the organization? So we've seen this overabundance of, of misinformation uh, that's been propagated in the media. It's been propagated by public health groups that have taken a, an inappropriate view of this product segment. And that is one of the most critical aspects of our mission, to tell a story, to tell the facts in a way that both the, the general public as well as decision makers in, in Washington, D.C. and in every state capital fully understand what the vapor technology industry is all about. We have to take that message and deliver it so that they can then make responsible policies. And I think one of the first things that we need to do is, in, in, is at the federal level and at the state level have a coordinated strategy in place. And that's what we've been focused on at the Vapor Technology Association. So 2016 really is a crucial year for our industry. 2016 is, of course, the year when the deeming rule was adopted by the Food and Drug Administration, which now has primary oversight over vaping products um, because now they fall under the definition of tobacco products. Of course, that's being challenged in court by, by our company, by Nicopure Labs. Uh, be it as it may and pending the outcome of that litigation, FDA for now has oversight over vaping products. Mm -hmm. um, so 2016, again, is a very important year, but we also see development at state level. What would you say is the biggest priority and what we need to accomplish in the immediate future to improve really the chances of survival of this industry? Yeah, I am, I'm glad you asked that question because the number one priority for our trade association and for the industry at large is to make sure that we save all the small and mid-sized businesses that have spent all their time, energy, resources, blood, sweat, and tears building a real uh, a business model around this industry, which is truly saving lives. And the way that we do that is we have to change the predicate date because the deeming regulation itself um, is, 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 is a direct threat to all of these companies that, are, that have cropped up and have built uh, uh, a real business model around this industry. And so the way that we have to do that is to pass what we have, uh, what is now called the Cole Bishop Amendment. Uh, and we are working exceptionally hard in Washington, D.C. in order to ensure that the Cole Bishop Amendment actually is passed at the end of this year so that that predicate date is changed and therefore everybody can stay in business. So um, what will the Cole Bishop Amendment do? Well, very simply, it will save small and mid-sized uh, vapor businesses because it will change the predicate date and allow them to continue selling the products that are already on the market. Uh, As of August 8, 2016, hopefully. That is correct. As opposed to mm -hmm. February 15, 2007, when most of these businesses, in fact, did not exist. Right. This is the single most glaring inadequacy of the deeming regulation. The FDA spent years preparing the deeming regulation and years responding to comments on the deeming regulation, and yet they've neglected uh, to at least allow the products that are on the market to remain on the market while the regulation itself 
plays itself out. And while the FDA itself tries to figure out how they really do want to regulate this, the, these, these products. But by not making that change, they have effectively uh, are terminating those small businesses because the requirements of filing the PMTA applications, as you know, are so onerous and so expensive that it will uh, result in the elimination of 95% uh, or more of the products that are on the market, which will be a truly, truly sad day for all the consumers that are in fact relying on these products because they're changing their lives. It will be a truly sad day for really public health in general because of the tobacco harm reduction potential of these products. Um, <clears throat> you know, one thing that we've noticed when, when we saw the deeming rule, and as you've said, FDA has spent years taking care of, um, of it and trying to prepare for, for it. Uh, we noticed that really the deeming rule does little, if anything, to improve the safety of the products. Um, are there any features of the Cole Bishop amendments that address um, this particular issue? Absolutely, and, and you're absolutely right. The, the, the deeming regulation is, is anti-innovation, I mean, a, a, at its worst. And, and as much as the FDA wants and claims that it wants to have safe products on the market, it has ensured that the products that are on the market cannot be improved for, for many years which is crazy if you think about the fact that we work in a technology industry. But more specifically, one of the biggest issues today that you read about in the press is what's happening with batteries. And, and you'll see these, these, these stories about products that, that light on fire and things of that nature. The Cole Bishop Amendment goes further than the FDA because it says it is demanding that the FDA actually do something about battery standards. In other words, um, it's asking or requiring the FDA to do something, frankly, it should have been doing the last couple of years. Instead, the FDA has been more focused on, on, on coming up with ways to get more bureaucratic paperwork as opposed to coming up with real product standards that could make a difference in people's lives. Certainly. So for um, all of our audience, how does one get involved to save vapor? How does one get involved with VTA to save vapor? Well, one of, the, one of the easiest ways is to, to go to our website, savevapor.org. Um, and on that website, we have a number of different options for you to be involved. You can write letters or emails to your, your, your congressmen and women. You can participate in our um, We Are Vapor campaign, which is, a, is the first social media campaign that's directed at Congress, um, and, and show them the face of vapor. Uh, these are tools that we, we have to leverage because we are, in fact, uh, uh, you know, in the final months and weeks of, 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 a, of a very important part of this battle. And VTA is trying to lead the charge in order to make sure that everybody has a role to play and, and we want them to join our effort. Um, Tony Abud, again, Legislative Director, thank you very much for your time today. And um, thank you to you for um, tuning in into another webinar. I look forward to the next um, installment. Thank you.